Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition where today I think we're gonna go to Novaria. Uh, where, no, where to go? This one. So the N7 Cerberus Fighter Base, Emrak, it has requested assistance with its Cerberus Fighter Base on Novaria. We do get to land on Novaria to disable the base's defenses. I kept looking, I was like, oh, we gotta do a rune first. But you know what? A lot of these landing missions, and maybe I've said this before, maybe you've already figured it out, but a lot of the missions that we have to land on a planet for, or go to like a physical, lo like, you know, actually walk around a physical location, they do have a lot of these ones that are like, the cure, like the, the cure and the Tyrion poison type thing, you know, that they have these things on the planet, so, or like on, on a base or whatever, so. We'll just run through and do these ones. I might look up the, you know, sound like, I don't know where a rune is, I have to look it up. Never seemed popular for a while. They were fighting the collectors while the council sat and watched. And now they're killing civilians and attacking our allies. Yeah. Commander, Dr. Chuck was sent word oh. that she'd like to speak with you down in the med bay. Okay. Do I have... I don't think I have any mail. No. Okay. I'm, I'm down to talk. Crew deck. Man, I love this Are you one. Sure? I was gonna say, there's Garrus. What's the matter, Vicarian? You chicken? Ah, uh, yeah. I don't even know what that is. Though I've heard everything in the galaxy tastes like it. But if you're suggesting I'm scared, game on, Vega. Age before wisdom. Okay. Back in my CSEC days, I busted a Batarian spy ring that was trying to assassinate a counselor. Please, I fought off a dozen angry Batarians on Omega single-handedly. Used one of them as a landing pad off a three-story jump. Uh-huh. <laughs> Just warming up, seeing what you had. Now, that was the Saren thing. I tracked down this guy, Saren. Stopped him from raising a Geth army okay. and unleashing the Reapers three years ago. Doesn't count. You did that with Shepard. You're right. I was with Shepard oh. from the very beginning. Oh. That just means you're old. Oh, this is a competition about my love and affection, is it? Sorry, no, the first, the other thing I think is actually his comic? I'm not sure. Like, the, the story he mentioned where he saves a counselor from an assassination attempt. I think that's in his comic. Shepard? Remember yes! Remember our agreement? We'd open a bottle of Cerise Ice Brandy every year, and it's my turn to buy. But it hasn't been a year yet. Yes, well, something tells me we won't have the chance a few months from now, so indulge my impatience. I, I, I mean, I get it. I would, I would probably do it, honestly. But, you know, it's like uh, you don't want her to drink herself into despair, you know? It's like, no, hold on to it. Like, we'll drink later, you know? And if nothing else, I don't know, theme, like poetically, thematically, if she just has a drink and raises her glass if I'm not there. You know, that's enough for me. Doctor, put that bottle in a safe place. We'll crack it open to celebrate our victory over the Reapers. Admire your optimism, and I'll look forward to the day we can share it. Till then. Hmm, do I want to do that? I think Shepard could use a drink. Hold on, let's see. Let's save. I'm... Oh my god, I don't save scum much. That's a lie. I save scum a lot in games. But sometimes I do it just because I want to see what the outcome is. And that was kind of boring, right? It's like, save it, you know? But it's like, you know what? Every, we all deserve a drink, you know? Like, you need a break. I, and I, I think my knee-jerk reaction is it's a renegade thing, so I'm like, no, you know? But, like, I tried to... They were fighting the collectors while the council sat and watched. I try to and do those sparingly, like, like renegade actions face. sparingly. But let's make sure we trigger this. Sure Alright, that's done. Let's check out this. Shepard? Remember? But I'll it be. hasn't been a year yet. Yes, well, something tells me we won't have let's the chance a few months from now, so... Indulge my impatience. You grab the glasses. I'll open the bottle. I mean, she's a bit depressed and about Jack it, says, but Jack, Jack, 
Jacqueline Subject Zero is sorry, but it's ma'am to me. I'd like to keep my Admiral Winky. Oh, Shepard. You know, I just realized. You've never called me by my first name. Well, neither have you. Oh! And I never will. You are Commander Shepard. Hero of the Citadel. Conqueror of the Collectors. Savior of the Galaxy. That's a little much, but it's true. Using your first name just disrespects everyone you're fighting for. Alive or gone. She's still holding a pad in her hand. <laughs> that makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Consider it a lady's prerogative, then. Come, let's have a toast. <gasps> oh! To a woman I'm proud to call my friend. I am lucky to have you with me, Karen. And to you, dear friend. It is my great honor to share this journey with you. Commander Shepard. And good fortune to us all. Yay, I like that. I like that much better. I I've learned my lesson this time. Even a Krogan couldn't match you drink for drink. You sound fine. I think I sounded a little drunk. It was funny. To my friend Karen. I actually don't know if I knew this. this huh? Knew that name. I can do this all day, Scars. Funny you mention those. Ever hear the name Archangel? I might have. You know you have. I'm Archangel. Maybe I heard something about that too. Hmm. Then maybe you also heard. That for a couple months there, the crime rate on Omega mysteriously dropped while Archangel did a little house cleaning. So you ran a cleaning service on Omega. Back on Fell Prime, I uncovered a pair of harvesters. Had to kill them by myself. Two worm necks, that's almost impressive. Oh boy. Oh, that's not even the best part. They left behind an egg. Oh my. It hatched, and I trained it to let me fly uh... it. <laughs> The Alliance teach you to make up crap like that? Or did you figure it out all by yourself? It's a gift. It's a gift. <laughs> it's a gift, he says. Oh my gosh. Have we heard from Agent Detrace yet? She has not reported in for over eight hours, Doctor. She was stationed on Valchir when the Reapers invaded. I think we can assume what happened. Inform Agent Calamus he's now in charge of reporting Reaper activity past the lowest relay. I mean, she might just be, you know, laying low. Uh, I miss you, Brim, but I'm glad you're back there. The fighting's gonna get tough when we push out with the Crucible. Uh, I've gotten the cold shoulder from people who know I used to work with Cerberus. Can't say I blame them, especially after what happened on the Citadel. I've been able to teach other soldiers how to how Cerberus fights, though. They might be wearing new equipment, but I know their tactics. I love you, Brim. Take care of yourself. Yay! Feel free to look around. Jacob. I, I, I really do service. only wish the best for Jacob. I just been through a lot, Scar. wish you giving up? they'd been better. Nah, I got more. Just don't like to talk about it. Fair enough. We've all got one of those. Just one, huh? Yeah. Not every story has a happy ending. Except there was this one time I teamed up with a Turian named Garrus Vicarian. He was pretty good with a gun, but he thought he was some kind of hotshot. Yeah. Yeah, I knew this wise-ass Marine <laughs> named Jimmy Vega. Sounds like a pole dancer on Omega. Always got on my nerves. But the kid was all right. Had guts when it counted. And together they cured the genophage. And together... And stopped Cerberus from taking over the Citadel. And finally kicked the Reapers from this galaxy and into the next. With a little help from their friends. Nah, it was just us. But mostly me. What, what am I? Chop suey? Like... <laughs> no. I love seeing the bonding. And I don't, I don't think about it really as, um... We're not that old. <laughs> Maybe that's just... That's me being in my 30s and being like, we're not that old. <laughs> I'm glad Jacob saw through the elusive man. At least not everyone in Cerberus has lost their mind. This fight can use him. It's true, it's true. I was, I was wondering, I did want to go, I was going to go bother, um... Joker, because I was curious if people were going to say anything about Jacob. Hey, Commander. Okay. We can go see, I guess the M button doesn't work. There's a map button. Oh, he's in the crew quarters. Okay. I was like, I think Caden's probably on this floor. What are you... Just, 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 are you... Do you live in here? I guess... Everybody probably does, huh? 
like Garrus and Caden, like my 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 particular like palsies probably don't have they don't really have like special quarters. I always think of them sleeping in the rooms that they're usually in, but that'd be a little weird. No talking? Hey, if you get a moment, we should head out to the Citadel for a snack. For a snack. I know a place that uh, still has steak. We just did steak. I think we literally just did steak. Or is it like, or is he talking like, like we didn't have that situation already? They are, um... All right, let's just, it is, it is good to run through, make sure I catch any ambient dialogue. So let's run down. Is that a banshee? That's spoilers. Spoilers. You have anything, Engineer Adams? Nothing to report, Commander. Okay, beautiful, love it. You and this human called Jacob were both part of Cerberus. That is correct. And Cerberus is filled with traitors to humanity. Yes, they oppose us in this war. Then why should we trust either of you? We have severed our ties with the organization. But you were programmed by Cerberus. I can extrapolate where this is going. I have superseded my original programming and have chosen to oppose Cerberus. You mean you have chosen to oppose your creators? Correct. I find this a very troubling freedom machine. That is all. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, that's kind of what... That's, this is why AI is troubling, because people don't like the idea of machine sentience. To be fair, I think Javik says that they had an issue with that, or, like, the people who came before them did. I think, though, that there was a, there was a, a race of sentient machines, and as was, you know, I don't want to do too much spoilery, but as we know, that's actually a, uh, a resounding theme throughout the ages. And one of the things that Reapers focus on is that uh, theme of war between machine and organic. <laughs> Those humans you saved were fortunate. There are still places in the galaxy to hide. Our refugees perished. There was nowhere left to run. I mean, they per like, everyone's gonna perish eventually if we don't fix this. I trust you, Commander. When you say you no longer expedite Cerberus' goals, otherwise. Yeah, I don't know. He could, he could maybe take me, I don't know. Perhaps later, Commander. Javik's scary. Definitely want him on your side, as much as he's on anybody's side, you know? Ugh, I'm falling down tired. I need a folding chair or something. Sit down. On your, on your bed. Or in a, I think you got a chair over there. I think it's supposed to be a joke. Like, she's no, she's always standing up. Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Oh, is he not? No, there you are. I was like, I know you're down here. Shepard, thanks again for being there at the refugee memorial. I feel better. Everything's so much clearer now. Glad I could help. You know, next time we're at the Citadel, I think I might hit a nightclub. You should join me. <laughs> I do, and I think it is one of those situations where uh, Shepard does, does if, if you want, Shepard will agree to dance, and it's like, ah. The Cerberus scientists are safe with the Alliance. The Brass thinks they'll be a big help on the Crucible. First Grissom Academy, now this. Nice work. You know how fighter pilots put those little stamp things under their cockpits for each kill? I'm thinking of getting one by the galaxy map every time I analyze the crap out of some data. You turn it into a regular marine. <laughs> yes, well, I guess you're rubbing off on me. Nice work. Thanks, Commander. It feels good to bring someone out alive. Commander? It's true. Except hers will be, uh, she'll have little stickers for all the times she saves people. <laughs> Alright, here's another one. Uh, dates back to the Rachni Wars. So, a Krogan and a Solarian have landed on a Rachni oh. world for a top secret mission. I remember this. That is unlikely. <laughs> Solarians rarely took part in raids on Rachni occupied worlds directly. <sighs> Missing the point. So, the two guys are climbing up a hill going through this nasty green fog. And as they get near the top, they come out of the fog, and the Solarian sees thousands of Rachni. 
He looks over at the Krogan and says, Oh, well, that makes me nervous! The Krogan says, You think that's scary? When this is over, I have to go back down through that fog by myself! The implication being that the Salarian soldier would be dead. <laughs> yes. Thank you for killing the 2,000-year-old joke. Yes. That joke plays to racial stereotypes on both sides. The Krogan appears brutish and insensitive, while the Salarian appears weak. Stereotypes such as exemplified here led to the development and use of the genophage. Well, well, yeah. It's also one of the only jokes you'll hear both Salarians and Krogan telling. Comedy isn't really about being nice. Sometimes it's a way to air out the ugly things people think. I actually used this interaction in a paper I did in, oh shoot, it was like a class, it was like games and like humor, like college course that I took that like analyzed play behavior centrally, uh, like and mostly it was like involving in like games, you know, not just like video games, but like, uh, like, you know, dice games, like, you know, stuff like this, but it also, it was like, it was like games and humor, and it was like, part of the course was about using those two things as coping mechanisms, but also one of the things I specifically remember was that humor can bridge the gap between different groups of people, right? Where, like, if you can joke about certain things together, it, I, what is, I'm not saying it very well, but you can... You can acknowledge the stereotypes on both sides through humor and recognize that maybe there is some, like, some, like, tiny grain of, like, validity to, like, certain things. Or, like, Salarians are, like, biologically weaker, like, uh, physically weaker than Krogan, you know? Um, but, and Krogan are generally not societally anyway encouraged into uh, more intellectual pursuits you know um but they can both look at those stereotypes of themselves and laugh together you know i'm sure not everybody would and humor is obviously like the like there's there's a, there's some fine lines you know it's very it's actually a very complicated subject <laughs> but i did think it was interesting right where like it's used as like to bridge a gap to bridge like an understanding essentially of um like cultural, uh, personal characteristics sometimes, you know? So I think it's pretty interesting. How's Jacob? He'll be okay. <sighs> Glad to hear it. Nice to see those Cerberus scientists come to their senses. After everything he's done, the elusive man can't pretend he's fighting for humanity. Anyone who isn't indoctrinated has to see that by now. Well, we got out early. Yeah. Well, and it's also, uh, like, I don't know, I feel like he's way, like, I know he's trying to cover his tracks by killing those scientists, but he's killing some of the top, like, minds of humanity, you know? So, like, he's undermining himself, essentially. He's undermining his, his whole, his whole spiel. I mean, he has been this whole time when he's killing humans that, like, not this whole time, but this whole, this particular game in Mass Effect 3, you know? And it just kind of goes to show, people keep pointing out, right, that, like, he's doing things that, like, Cerberus wouldn't normally do. Like, things, like, Cerberus has been like a black ops organization and it has been like a terrorist organization in some senses but ever since the elusive man came in power like he really has been trying to, to do like to like make sure humanity doesn't like fall behind essentially um and like he was willing to be cruel about it i think in two right he had the um he, he like basically was willing to sacrifice an entire planet an entire colony of humans in order to save more, like other humans, right? Like he 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 basically laid a trap for the collectors, saying that Shepard would be on this particular planet, um, and then you know he told, told Shepard he's like you know oh yeah they're gonna be there, oh, wow crazy you know <laughs> and uh, and he was willing to sacrifice those humans in order to save like what is it the utilitarianism right where like the the save you know, you sacrifice the few for the needs of the many or whatever. Um, so, but I get it, right? Like, sometimes, in, like, you have to make really difficult decisions. Like, and I, in that situation, I don't think he was necessarily, like, correct. But, um, but sometimes you do have to make really difficult decisions um, in war or in trying to protect various things. What's on your mind, Edie? Liara recently requested assistance in calculating whether the mass effect is a phenomenon that occurs only in our universe or in all possible universes. Why? 
It may be that our laws of physics only occur in a finite area. A bubble, if you will. In an ocean of other possibilities. I'm speculating whether, if you went far enough out, or created enough energy, you could reach a place where one plus one equaled three. Everything would change. All energy, all matter, all the underlying math of the universe would be unrecognizable to us. Why? What were you thinking? What? I'll get back to you on that. I, I was thinking about steak. I, I don't know. I was- I guess I was thinking and I, I was philosophizing on humor as a- as a bridging characteristic between various cultural or ethnic or philosophical groups. But, uh, nope, wasn't thinking about dimensions. <laughs> Dang, that's like tw that's like 20 minutes. Ugh, I hate- I hate starting something new when... We have we talk I hate starting sorry I hate starting something new and we don't have that much time. Yeah, we talk to everybody. I can't really think of anything else <laughs> to do. Oh shoot. No. I got a freaking I can't remember where was is it gonna let me Where was a freaking, I don't remember where Novaria is. I hate, okay, in the first game, you could click on it, or in the second game, rather, you could click on it, and it would be like, like, it would give you the, the blurb first, and then you click on it, and it would tell you what system and cluster it was in. And now I'm like, I gotta look it up myself? Like, find them in this land, and I'd be like, well, maybe this one is like, because they're like, you know where Novaria is. I'm like, I don't remember where Novaria is. <laughs> no, I can't, I barely, I barely remember anything. Ever. All right, we gotta run. Maybe if I come in. Oh, I can't. Oh, they are not mad anymore. Maybe I can. Where's the other, where's the stuff? Oh, 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 I can't, oh no! Ah! <laughs> okay, so we finally get to see it. I don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, this is all that happens when you get caught by the Reapers. You'd think they would have like a cool cutscene of your ship getting ripped apart or something, uh, but they don't. Um, like I said, I'm not used to the mouse and keyboard for the- I usually- I've been using the controller when I'm not- when I'm doing everything else but fighting. So, did I claim it? I think I did. And the fact that I have to click on that and not- Oh shoot, look at all these- look at all these things. This one, the Cerberus spider- what, what's- oh, it's so sensitive. Investigate the Asari colony. Speak with the Quarians. Oh my gosh, should I? Oh no, I think no. Mm. You know, I was, I was like, oh, I should pick up some of these little missions and stuff. I really, I should because if, but the thing is, is like, if I get Tally, um, that's great, right? You know, and then I can have her on the ship for more time. But once I do Rannoch, I'm gonna get even more side missions, you know? So I'm like, <laughs> like it's just, it makes the list so huge, but okay, actually, I mean, this is, this is technically, I guess not Rannoch. Rannoch is, that's something we need to be very, very careful not to click on something until we're ready. We need to not click on Rannoch specifically until we're ready, but it looks like Priority Perseus Vale, which is where, where we go chat with the Quarians. But what, it's gonna kind of happen in order, right? Like you're you're not gonna do Perseus Vale and then not like work your way down to Rannoch, like the Rannoch missions. Okay, I wasn't sure actually, but I keep seeing the um, I keep seeing the uh, sorry Colony one, and that is. I believe that is where we will interact with 
Samara. I keep thinking she's going to show up. I thought she was going to ask for our help on the Citadel. But I think we actually just run into her on the Asari one. That one, maybe. Oh, should we do that one instead? Oh, there's bunches. There's so many we could do. I think let's do, let's do that one. Next. I just checked, and as far as I know, none of these will be cut off if I do Renok, if I go get Tally. Um, so I should be all right to just do that. I'm a little concerned. And I, or it's not going to be enough time for me to sit and wait and see what people say, obviously. All right, I realize this one's a little short, but I really don't want to start another mission at, like, the end of an episode. So I think next, instead of actually going to Novaria, <laughs> we're going to go do Masana. Um, and then potentially we're going to go do a bunch of the Rannoch stuff. But that will, that will mean our list gets utterly massive. But that's okay. We'll get it. We'll get it done. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Sorry I got a little bit wishy-washy there at the end, but um, that's okay. A short one, just chatting and listening to people talk is always nice. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Galito, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Adam, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support, my friend. I very much appreciate it. And I hope you're doing well. Um, and I want to give an extra, extra special shout out to Christopher, my forest tier patron, who has gone above, above and beyond in their support of the channel and of me. And I very, very much appreciate it. Very, very super duper much. That's how eloquent I am. Super duper much. So thank you guys again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.